This is the last Apple Corps before the Apple event, so here's a look at everything you need to know. iPhones are pretty much a given at this event, and if the rumors are true, we're gonna be getting three new models this year, as shown in this video by Mike the Detroit Borg. A 5.8 inch iPhone X sequel, a larger plus version with a 6.5 inch screen that you can see to the end, and the one in the middle, a 6.1 inch LCD version of the 10. Now for my sanity's sake today, we're gonna be calling them the iPhone XS, iPhone 9, and XS Plus. Although it's highly possible that the official names will be something completely different. Apple is rumored to be getting rid of the Plus branding and calling both OLED models the XS. Now with that out of the way, let's focus on the XSs. And they may look a lot like this. I don't know how they got their hands on this picture, but 9to5Mac seems pretty sure that this is the real deal. And if it is, we can confirm that they have a similar design to the previous 10 and a new gold color option. They'll both have an A12 chip with a second generation Face ID and upgraded dual camera. The PLOS model may get a dual SIM support with wireless fast charging capabilities and Apple Pencil support, but that last rumor seems to be losing steam, so I wouldn't bet on it. They're also rumored to cost around $899 and $999 for the base models, and with an option of 512 gigabytes in storage. But perhaps the more interesting iPhone this year would be the 6.1 inch iPhone 9. And based on Apple's order numbers, even the company is expecting this one to be the best seller. The design would be similar to the iPhone X, with a few small differences, including more color options. As shown in this mock-up video by Concepts iPhone, that LCD display will have slightly thicker bezels, the frame would be aluminum rather than stainless steel, with a single camera on the back and slightly chunkier body. Now inside, it could still run that A12 processor, but it may run a first-gen Face ID and no 3D touch. Also, maybe in this phone, dual SIM option. This one would start at around $699 with a max storage capacity of 256 gigabytes. But you'll have to wait longer to get it if analyst Ming-Chi Kuo is right on the money about the expected production delays. Now inside the box, they may all be getting a USB-C to lightning fast charger, but no dongle this time around. Which apparently is the best-selling Apple product at Best Buy, so expect it to continue in its spot of number one for next year. And the other rumored product that's almost as much of a sure thing as the iPhones at this point is the Apple Watch Series 4. And again, thanks to 9to5Mac, we have a pretty good inkling of what this will look like. Definitely more screen real estate. 15% more with slimmer bezels and a slightly slimmer design. At least that's what it appears to look like on the photo. It also shows a microphone below the digital crown this time, which now has a red outline instead of that ugly red dot that I hated from the Series 3. And a lot more complications on the watch face with what seems to be a new UV exposure reading on the bottom, a feature which Apple had already patented a few months back. Now it's no secret Apple is doubling down on health for its Apple Watch, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see other sensors similar to a UV sensor in this next version of the Apple Watch, maybe an SpO2 sensor, perhaps sleep tracking, or somewhere along these lines. What's definitely a sure thing on September 12th are software updates. Apple will release iOS 12, watchOS 5, macOS Mojave, and tvOS. This latest iOS update will bring group notifications, digital health features, aka screen time controls, multiplayer AR, and memojis to all your iOS devices. Well, actually, that last one is just for iPhone 10. But group FaceTime, one of the features I at least was most excited about, is not ready for prime time yet, so we'll have to wait for a later version of iOS 12 to try it out. We have a bunch of content of all the updates on CNET.com, so make sure to check out more details on the updates coming to your devices after you finish this video. And after a year-long wait, Apple's Air Power Mat is rumored to make its official debut at this event. Now, it's not clear whether they will announce the price and availability on stage or if it'll be an update to the Apple Store later on that day, but it really has to happen on September 12th. Now, according to a recent report in Mac Rumors, 
It will cost you $150 to charge all these three Apple devices at once. We knew it wasn't gonna come cheap, guys. Now don't expect second generation AirPods at this event, you'll have to wait till 2019 for that, but what we can expect is the wireless charging case. Now personally, that's all I'm expecting to see at this launch event, but with Apple you never know, so we do have to mention the other products rumored to be making their appearance before the end of the year. Starting with iPad Pros, this year we expect an iPhone X makeover for the iPad, meaning slimmer bezels, no home button, and Face ID. In two sizes, an 11 and a 12.9 inch screen. A recent Bloomberg report also says we can expect a new low-cost laptop and a Mac mini upgrade this year. Now that 13-inch MacBook Air sequel would have slimmer bezels with a retina display and a similar price point of around $1,000, while the Mac mini would get new storage options and better processor, but at a slightly higher price. Now my guess is we'll see these products at another October event, but we'll have to wait and see. We think we know a lot about the products that Apple has in store for us, but I'm at least hoping for a few surprises. What's the one more thing you guys want to see? You can follow the Apple event live on CNET.com and on YouTube starting at 9 a.m. San Francisco time on September 12th for all the pre-event details, or just tweet me at Vane Hand if you want a behind-the-scenes look at the event. I'll see you on the other side.